Lauds Dawson. So. Frustrating. Start over. Hey everybody, Deathblade here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ where I talk about stuff related to Chinese fantasy novels and translation of Chinese fiction in general. In case you're new to the channel, my name is Deathblade and I am a professional, or at least I make my living translating Chinese fantasy novels into English. So I've seen a lot of this stuff and I have a lot of experience with it. Today I'm talking about an expression that is actually really common both in the novels and in everyday Chinese in China and other Chinese uh, speaking places. Unfortunately, also in my list of top four or five most hated translations. In other words, the way that it's commonly translated, I hate, I hate it. I really, really hate it. I dislike it. I loathe it. It makes me sick. I want to like jump out the window when I see it translated as it often is, which is I, your father. And I'm going to get into a little bit about why it's translated like that and why that is the wrong way to translate it. A lot of times I make these videos and I say, this is my opinion and I think it should be this way, blah, blah. In this case, I, I'm doubling down and I'm saying it is wrong to translate it as I, your father, like almost all the time. Okay, I'm going to get to that in a second. I originally wanted to include this in a sort of larger video where I talk about what I view to be improper or incorrect translations of common Chinese terms, but as it turned out, I'm so passionate about these various bad translations that I decided to do them one at a time. And this is, I would say, probably top one or two on my list. So let's get into it. What is the term in Chinese? In Chinese, it is laozi. And I'm just gonna pull up the definition in my dictionary so that you can look at it. As you can see, it can just mean father, but uh, the number two definition, it basically just means I or me when used in anger or in fun. Going down a little bit farther, they're all variations on the same same kind of thing. Look at definition number three here. It says, I, your father, which is what you see in Chinese translations, especially the fantasy novels, a lot. Going down a little bit further, um, you can see a form of self-addressed used by an arrogant person. So that pretty much explains it all. And let me go into a little detail though. First of all, about I, your father. Now, before I get into why I don't like it and why I think it's wrong and what I think should be done instead, I do want to point out that it is really common. So people who read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels have seen it, they've gotten used to it, and I see it used in comments as like a you know funny thing to reference how Chinese fantasy novels tend to be. And I think that a lot of people kind of like that expression. I get that. When you see something a lot, you get used to it and you like, you like it, uh, you even start to use it. But just because it's common, just because you're used to it, just because a lot of people use it, that doesn't mean necessarily that it's okay or right. I mean, you know, let's say everybody in the world woke up by poking your friend in the eye. Eventually you would get used to being poked in the eye, but that doesn't necessarily mean that being poked in the eye is a good thing. Okay, maybe that's a bad analogy, it just sprang to mind. But my point is just because a lot of people have gotten used to this expression doesn't mean that it is the right way to translate it. So as you remember from the definition, it does mean father, which is why the I, your father gets used. It's a third person form of address. Now that in itself is one of the main things that causes a problem. Because in Chinese, it is really common to use third person forms of address. Whether that is your name or whether it is your title or some other um, expression, it is really common to do that. You're talking to people and you will refer to yourself in the third person, it is totally normal. In English, it is not so normal. Normally, outside of certain formal occasions or perhaps if you're like a villain making a monologue, most of the time, you're not going to hear people referring to themselves by their own name or by their title. But in Chinese, it's super common. So that's one of the reasons why this is difficult because translators often run into it and they try to figure out, how do I do this? This person is referring to themselves by their name or their title. How do I convey that? And a lot of times they will go with the most accurate method, which is just to directly translate it so that the reader sees exactly what the person is saying. Now, there are some times when direct translation and perfect accuracy is important. I personally think that in fiction, a lot of the times that's not the case. And now that's kind of a subject for another video, which I've been meaning to do for a while, which is my translation theory. And I'll get into that at another time, but the point is just that I do not agree that translating literally, directly, and 100% accurately is always the best thing. So let's talk for a second why saying I, your father, is completely wrong. How is this expression used? Well, as you might remember from the definition, it's used to refer to yourself in anger or when you're joking, or it's used by an arrogant person. And that's exactly the best way to explain it. When someone is angry with somebody else, or when an arrogant person is talking down to someone else, they will refer to themselves with this expression, laozi. And the whole point of it is to put the other person down, um, to put yourself up, 
to establish your dominance, to establish your authority, to establish their inferiority. And essentially it could be viewed as sort of like an insulting term as well. So in my mind, here's how, this is like the quintessential version of, of how it is used. I envision like this tall, broad shoulder, but pot bellied, bald Chinese guy with like some tattoos and like a cigarette in his mouth, a bottle of Baijiu, like trying to get in a fight and be like, Lao Zedasani, ah! Like that's kind of how I envision it. It's supposed to be really aggressive. It's supposed to sound cool and even a little bit scary. Unfortunately, I, your father, does not meet any of those requirements. First of all, I, your father, I'm sorry, that's not English. Nobody in the English language that I know of, whether you're talking about America, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, or any of the other countries where English is a native language, I don't envision any person ever picking a fight by saying, I, your father, will beat you, or something like that. No, it's just not gonna happen. This is, this is a classic case of direct translation that comes across as sounding like Chinglish, or at least the very best, not what a native speaker would say. So what is it supposed to sound like? It's supposed to sound arrogant, domineering, aggressive. And so translating it directly takes out all of that. It strips it of all the core elements of what it's supposed to be and turns it into something that sounds silly. And that is how I see the readers of Chinese fantasy novels using it in uh, comments, in reviews of novels and whatnot. To them, it's kind of something of a joke. It sounds silly and so they use it in a silly way with each other, but it doesn't sound like that in Chinese. Even when friends are using it jokingly, it doesn't sound silly. It's It sounds funny to them when using it because normally speaking, it would be something that a really arrogant person would use when they're angry. So here's an example. Let's say, and here's a little bit of language in case you're listening to this with young children, not super bad, but a little bit of uh, PG language. Let's say that you had an English novel and in the novel, someone said, I'm gonna kick your ass. And then somebody was translating it into Chinese and they translated it as, which literally means, I will use my foot to kick your rear end. I mean, like, technically speaking, yes, that is literally what is being said. When you say, I'm gonna kick your ass, you're literally saying, I am going to use my foot to kick your butt. That is not what it means. It's an aggressive expression that you are using, potentially insulting, you're kind of trying to start a fight. That is the same with Lao Tzu. It does not sound funny, it does not sound silly in Chinese. So how should it be translated? Well, this goes back to the issue of third person address. I am of the opinion that when you are translating fiction, especially these fantasy novels, what's more important than every single term coming across 100% accurately and 100% direct, what I feel is more important is that the reader experience the same thing that the reader in the original language will experience. So when you're a Chinese person and you're reading these things and they use this term Lao Tzu, it just comes across as that person kind of being an a-hole or a jerk, an arrogant person trying to pick a fight and insult the other person. So how do you do that in English? Again, this is, this is my personal opinion. I think that you need to take out that third person form of address. It's just not common in English and trying to carry that third person form of address into English will ruin the flow of the narrative almost every single time. Best thing is to get rid of that and change the general tone of voice of that character into something aggressive, domineering, insulting, etc. So what I will do, and not, not every time, but sometimes I'll throw the word fool in there. Like I'll have the person say, you listen to me, fool, I'm gonna beat you up, or something like that, as opposed to I, your father, will beat you up. That's not the catch-all to say fool, but that's a good one. And there are other ones where the translator can use different language within English to carry across that same tone of being aggressive, domineering, and insulting. So, that's my take on this. What do you think? Uh, if you are a fan of Chinese fantasy novels, I'm sure you have seen this. Uh, what do you think about it? I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be like, I like it because it gives an exotic feeling to the story. I get it, you know, a lot of people are used to the exotic, weird translations that come across, but again, like I pointed out, the readers who read these stories in Chinese, they do not sound exotic and weird to those readers. They sound cool, they sound funny, they sound interesting for the reasons that make sense to them culturally. And I think that butchering the language to a point where people laugh at it because they think it sounds nonsensical, that's a disservice to language, the culture, the author, and even the readers of those original novels. So again, what do you think? If you're a translator, do you have any other opinions how to do it? I'd love to hear it. Uh, that's it for this video. If you'd like to support the channel, please do like and subscribe. Uh, please do hit the notification bell, maybe share the video with someone that you think would like it. I'm trying to do these videos once a week regularly, and so far I've been able to sort of like do that over the past several weeks. 
And so I'm getting closer to adding something like Patreon. I don't know, okay, th this is just some random rambling. So if you don't care about the update side of the channel, you can just kind of stop the video here. But I do want to point out that if you remember the previous video or if you watched it, in which I was talking about cultivation, if you look closely, you'll notice that the first half of the video has a lot of a lot of kind of edits and, and interesting things. And the last half of the video kind of kind of doesn't have as much. And <laughs> Madam Deathway basically came to me and she's like, look. Uh, I'm done with the video. I did a lot in the first half, but it just got too difficult for the second half. The computer's too slow. I click something, it takes a minute for anything to happen. And the problem is that she is working on kind of an old laptop that we have. I do have my own workstation where I do translating, but I am on that translating basically from the moment I wake up until about dinner time. And that's the key time when she has to do editing. And so right now she's stuck with this really old kind of clunky computer. I'm really hoping in the future to kind of monetize the channel to some degree to help her to get a better little laptop so that she can edit more quickly and more efficiently. Right now it's really kind of a pain for her to do that. As I'm sure all of you know, the ads on YouTube don't make almost any money. And so all of the support from the channel comes from you guys. I thank you very much for all of the support that you have given. And again, I will give updates when it comes time. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time. Godzilla.